Aurelisu Augustinus was born on November 13th, 354, in the region of northern Africa in the country that is now known as Algeria. He lived there his entire life except for about four years. He and his family were Roman citizens. His father, Patricius, was Roman either through ancestry, legal citizenship, or both. His mother, Monica, was of Berber origin. North Africa was part of the Roman Empire, but like Israel at the time of Jesus, being posted there wasn't considered very prestigious. Aurelisu Augustinus' father was a decurio, a minor official of the Roman Empire. The position was far from desirable because a decurio was required to act as a patron for his community and to make up any shortfalls in taxes collected from the region. This responsibility probably kept a constant strain on the family's finances and may account for, say, Augustine of Hippo's assertions in his autobiography Confessions that his family was poor. Aurelisu had at least one brother whose name was Navigius and at least one sister, but not much is known about his siblings. When Aurelisu Augustinus was about 16, his parents sent him to the university at Carthage, the largest city in the region. He studied Greek and Latin literature and poetry there with the generous support of a patron, Romanianus, in preparation for a career as a rhetor, a professional public speaker and teacher of rhetoric. Soon after Augustine came to Carthage, his father died, leaving Augustine as the head of the family. Like most saints, Augustine wasn't always a saint. In Carthage, he set up house with a concubine, the mother of his son, Adeodatus, who was born about 372. Augustine wrote about them in his confessions. She was known as the one in his confessions. During this time, he read the book that began his spiritual and philosophical journey, Cicero's Hortensius, which he says inspired him with the desire to seek the truth. He was drawn to studying philosophy, psychology, human nature, and religion, essentially wisdom in the ancient sense. Although his father was pagan, his mother, Saint Monica, was Christian, and Aurelius was brought up as a Christian, although not baptized as an infant. But in Carthage, he also encountered Manichaeism, the religion that dominated his life for the following decade. Augustine was attracted to Manichaeism's clear dividing line between good and evil, its highly intellectual mythology, and its strict moral standards. Augustine taught rhetoric in Carthage until 383, when, encouraged by wealthy Manichae friends, he moved on to Rome and accepted a similar position. He spent a year in Rome and then moved on to Milan, where he obtained the prestigious position as a professor of rhetoric for the imperial court. Now, in 386, Augustine of Hippo was moving away from Manichae beliefs and toward his conversion. Through influences such as the prayers of his holy mother, St. Monica, the preaching of St. Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, and especially reading the life of St. Anthony of the Desert, Augustine finally became convinced that Christianity was the one true religion. In spite of this acknowledgement, Augustine resisted complete surrender to God's will for many years. In his confessions, St. Augustine of Hippo tells us that his conversion was incited by a young child's voice. Take up and read! Take up and read! I arose, interpreting it to be no other than a command from God to open the book and read the first chapter I should find. For I had heard of Antony, that coming in during the reading of the gospel, he received the admonition, as if what was being read was spoken to him. Go, 
Sell all that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. And come, and follow me. And by such oracle he was forthwith converted unto thee. Eagerly then I returned to the place where Alypius was sitting, for there I had laid the volume of the apostle when I arose thence. I seized, opened, and in silence read that section on which my eyes first fell. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh in concupiscence. No further would I read, nor needed I, for instantly, at the end of this sentence, by a light, as it were, of serenity infused into my heart, all the darkness of doubt vanished away. Augustine and his son, Adeodatus, were baptized on the Easter Vigil in 387 by the Bishop Ambrose in Milan. Shortly afterwards, they and Augustine of Hippo's mother started their return to Africa. Unfortunately, St. Monica did not complete the journey. She died in Ostia. Another tragedy for Augustine was that his son died soon after their return. Augustine of Hippo, about 35 years old, adopted a monastic way of life, like what his friend Pontitianus had told him about in Milan just prior to his conversion. He gave away his luxuries and eventually sold his inheritance to pursue a monastic foundation in Hippo Regis, where he was ordained as a priest in 391 and made bishop four years later. He was at first quite reluctant to become priest and tried to avoid it, but obliged out of the community's appeals. During St. Monica's and St. Augustine's lifetimes, the Christian Church in Northern Africa was divided into two opposing factions, the Donatists and the Catholics. In the early 300s, the African Church had suffered imperial persecutions. As expected, some Christians had publicly renounced their beliefs to escape torture and execution, while others accepted martyrdom for their faith. After the persecutions ended, the Catholic faction readmitted those Christians who made public repentance for having renounced their faith. But the Donatonist faction insisted that anyone wanting to rejoin the church would have to be rebaptized. Additionally, the Donatonists refused to recognize any priests or bishops except their own, believing that the Catholic bishops had been ordained by traitors. By the 390s, the conflict had erupted into violence, with Donatonist outlaws attacking Catholic travelers in the countryside. As bishop, Augustine of Hippo tried diplomacy with the Donatonist at first, but they refused his proposals and suggestions. He eventually supported the use of force against them. The Roman government banned Donatism in 405, but conflict continued until 411, when hundreds of Donatist and Catholic bishops met for a hearing in Carthage before the imperial commissioner, Marcellinus. Donatism was suppressed by severe legal penalties. In 429, northern Africa was invaded by the Vandals from Europe. The Vandals besieged the city of Hippo during the summer of 430. Augustine fell ill during August. According to his biographer, Posidius, Augustine spent the last days of his life studying the penitential psalms, which he had posted on the walls of his room, and weeping over his sins. He demanded that no one visit him, giving him uninterrupted time to pray. Augustine died in Hippo Regis, the modern-day city of Anaba in Algeria, on August 28, 430, at the age of 75, so he did not live to see the Vandals overrun Hippo in 431. 
the world Augustine had known, the ancient Roman Empire, was genuinely coming to an end. St. Augustine of Hippo had an enormously influential role in shaping the Christianized civilization of medieval Europe, the world that replaced the Roman Empire. He struggled with living in a secular society. He studied wisdom, logic, and critical thinking. He discerned the truth. He became a priest, a bishop, and the founder of a religious order of priests. St. Augustine overcame strong heresies, practiced great poverty, and supported the poor, preached very often, and prayed with great fervor right up until his death. He has been one of the most important and famous Catholic writers. Aurelisu Augustinus was canonized by popular acclaim and later recognized as a doctor of the church in 1298 by Pope Boniface VIII. He is one of the greatest saints that ever lived. Augustine's vision of Catholicism as an institution that could thrive despite the imperfections of believers later became a definitive statement about the role and purpose of the church. Among his voluminous body of work that includes numerous letters, sermons, and other texts, St. Augustine of Hippo is most known for his confessions written between 397 and 401. His other great classic work is The City of God, written between 413 and 427, a monumental exploration of the end of pagan civilization and the role of Christianity in history. A brief selection of Augustine's other major works include the following. Mm. 